say hello to the manliest man on Pinterest. Hello and welcome to the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Schaefer, the Sales Whisperer, your host. This is your home on the web for honest, no hype insights, advice, and inspiration to help you sell more, faster, at higher margin with less stress and more fun. When I entered the Air Force in 1997, I had a wife, a baby, another one on the way, and I had to put food on the table, which meant I had to be productive. I had to be efficient. I had to be successful at making sales, and I was. Over the next decade, I continued to succeed in various industries across the country, even across the world, which led me in 2006 to starting The Sales Whisperer. Since then, I have built a big business and a big family, and I have fed my family, provided for them based on my own skills, my hard work, my dedication, my insight, and now I give you this podcast as a free tool to help you learn what I have learned over 20 plus years. Another free tool that you can use to grow your sales is available over at thebestsalessecrets.com. Head on over there, and it's over 21 pages of advice, things including the seven keys you need to apply to win at sales, how to look at money, and the true purpose of the sale. So again, head on over to thebestsalessecrets.com for that free tool, and now on to the show. Jeff C., the manliest man on Pinterest. Welcome to the Sales Podcast. How are you? Doing good, doing good. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for making some time. You, uh, everybody watching the video, I, you know, I told them I felt a little less manly, so I had to get my. Uh, I, this is like Linus. This is my blanket, my comfort <laughs> blanket. So I'll hold my big PBR while we talk. Okay. There you go. Yeah, you can cradle it gently. Yeah, you're you're inspiring me with the man cave background. I'm gonna have to change some things. Uh, cool. But hey, well, we met at uh, what social media marketing world, right? Uh, yeah. Back in March, a few months ago. But uh, for those that don't know you, would you mind taking a minute or two, uh, give us a little uh, info on who you are and what you do, and we'll dive down the rabbit hole. Sure. My name is Jeff C, and I actually have a. It's a YouTube show and also a podcast called The Manly Pinterest Tip Show that I do every week, and it's live, and I actually can bring people on. Uh, they usually ask questions of my Pinterest experts during the show, and uh, it's doing really well. It's a lot of fun, and uh, it's really kind of changed the way I do business. So your YouTube is just about Pinterest? Yeah, I mean, it's, it started out that way. Now it's kind of... Uh, it does social media tips. I mean, I've gotten all sorts of things. So I don't really just focus on Pinterest. I try to kind of bend it that way a right. little bit just to keep to match the show. But uh, yeah, we're getting into other people. I mean, I've had Guy Kawasaki on, and he's talked about you know when he was launching Art of Social Media, uh, some stuff like that. So it's it's generally has to do with social media in some form. Right. Cool. Uh, so I'm hoping you've got some practical tips to share. I, to be honest, I'm kind of tired of some of these social media people. I think they only make money by teaching other people how to do social media. Right. Uh, teaching other people how to teach about social media right. versus right. the brick and mortar, you know, uh, the chiropractor, the dentist, the ice cream shop. I don't know, even the general contractor, the local mechanic, you know, how to use social media to grow their business. So, so can you enlighten us? Can you, can you share some words of wisdom? I mean, what, what can the local guy do, uh, you know, the auto mechanic, let's say, sure. to use social media to actually make some dang money? Sure. Well, it's, it's, it's just like word of mouth. Like, let's say it's your local B&I group, which I was a part of, and it's a great networking organization. Well, social media lets you do that on a global scale almost. Um, and it can go from, you know, you want a local business. Um, a great example, I just found them here in, I'm in Longview, Texas, and it's this new um, uh, shaved ice place called Shivers, and they're selling it out of a Airstream trailer. Really cool. <laughs> well, they have an awesome, and they make all their own. It's all organic. And they buy local, so it's really, it's really cool. But they're sh- they're selling, you know, shaved ice for five bucks, six bucks a pop. Right. But they sell out every day, and they have a huge Instagram channel. And their big thing is, at the end of the day, because they sell out, they have a picture almost every day of a kid holding a sign with a frowny face saying, "Sold out." And they post that every day to Instagram. Well, that's an awesome way to get your name out locally for, you know, this is a place to be. You want to get here early because you don't want to be (laughs) the parent that has your kid holding that sign at the end. So, I mean, there's some really cool and you got to think outside of the box for, you know, you just don't slap things up to Facebook or Pinterest or wherever um, just to and be done with it. You got to do a little creative thinking in it. So. 
Well, and honestly, that's hard for a lot of people. Uh, right. You know, I approach things from a sales and a marketing standpoint, uh, and really primarily now through writing, uh, and people struggle. You know, that they struggle with the written word. Uh, I think they, they just struggle with being creative. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've worked with guys. A friend of mine, a good friend of mine, is our mechanic. Uh, I've known him for a decade, uh, and he's slowly getting there. But I'm like, you know, focus in on a spark plug and how the gap got too low or maybe even fused together or, or just show show a, a used but decent spark plug, show the corrosion, right. show the machine that grinds it and cleans it, buffs it real quick, show a gapping tool. You know, that's like 10 or 12 pictures right. they could use, right? And do you think people, that they try to think too big and they, they think like, there's no interest in the small, but and actually it probably should start small and then go big, right? Yeah, and people really like, especially on some other, uh, like on Pinterest, the the a lot of the images that do really well is if if you're showing something like Target, you know, they'll go ahead. They have a couple ways they do pins. They'll put pins of like the individual, you know, product. Like you got a set of headphones or something. They'll do it on a white background. Here's a set of headphones. But they'll also do it in a setting, like on a table with music equipment and stuff like that. And people like to see those different styles of images. And so, uh, Mark Schaefer said re- something really, uh, really cool on um, uh, at Social Media Marketing World. He was talking about how great content. You're talking about writing. It's a great content. It's just kind of the price that's sitting at the table now on social media. You just have to have. I mean, that's just the price that's sitting at the table. Well, I would go a step further and say it's also images mm-hmm. um, because, you know, a lot of people spend all this time, and you talked about your mechanic who struggles with trying to do a, a good a good post or to write stuff. Well, go a little bit extra and, and put a great po- uh, image with that post. If you can't do it yourself, hire somebody else to do it or get somebody to create some uh, – templates for you on Canva or something like that. And, um, you know, don't just throw up an article that you think is great and not have an image with it because it's, it's really going to limit how many people will share it and the, the, tra- the traffic and the traction you'll get with it. Okay. So what, what are some tools they can use? Like you mentioned Canva. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, what are some things, some free or, ex- or inexpensive things uh, that people can do? And, and can they do them just from their phone or do they need to get to a desktop? Well, it depends on the platform you're, you're, you're wanting to do it for. Um, you can make, and Canva is kind of my go-to thing. I'm a big Photoshop user, so I, I kind of have a power user there. I've been using it for years. Okay. But, for, but a lot of times I'll create Canva templates for my clients where they can go in and drop an image in or something like that. So Canva's free. They have all the different social media templates built in there right for you. Um, in fact, I use all those dimensions for all my, my posts. Um, so Canva is a great one. If you're looking to do um, stuff on Instagram, um, and Instagram is really hard, a lot of people get their mind around, but there's a couple different apps. There's called Word Swag is a really good one. There's Legend that you can actually add um, video kind of to your, your, your post, which is really good. And another one that I like to use to edit uh, photos is called Inlight. And those are a couple of them. that I-N-L-I-G-H-T? Uh-huh. Okay. And uh, Ian, legend? it's Ian. It's Ian. Oh, I Yeah. And uh, are those Instagram? Um, those are those apps? are those are apps for your phone. I think they're I think they're I think Word Swag's both for Android and iOS. Um, I use an iPhone, and I'm not sure about the other ones. Okay. Uh, very cool. And are they, are they pretty straightforward, or do, do you have yeah, like some hidden simple. little gems? Well, my thing is, is a lot of times you can tell when people start posting quotes or whatever on Instagram, you can tell they're made in word swag. So my advice is, is to try to mix it up uh, different ways. And I, this is this kind of is a general statement, even for creating stock photographies for like a blog post or something. There's a lot of great free sites out there. Uh, Pexels is one. P E X L E S, I think, is, is a good one. Um, you know, I use for royalty royalty free stock photography. I use one two three R F. Dot com, um, but the thing is, is buy it. Don't just buy it for the smallest image you can, the, the smallest size you can to save money. Buy it a couple sizes bigger, and that way you can crop it creatively. You can do some things with it to try to make it look like something different. Because right. if you see some of these free sites that do the, the images, you'll see them pop up on all these different social media sites. And I want to stand out. I want to look different. And so I'll either create a filter for that image or I'll crop it in a unique way, uh, put some cool text on it and try to stand out and try to be different, I guess. Right. Well, that's true of anything, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's how the mainly Pinterest tips came into to, to being is because I, you know, that's a way to stand out. Right. How, how do people though, how, 
how do they know where to prioritize? How do they know where to focus? Like my buddy, the mechanic, let's say, how does he know, uh, should he start on Pinterest versus Instagram or just share these on his Facebook page? You know, I mean, there's, there's so many things to do. There's so many platforms. Right. How do you know which one is right? Well, one, if the one you enjoy, you know, somebody, I mean, if you're not going to do, um, Facebook, you hate getting on it. If you, this mechanic guy hates getting on Facebook, then don't try to force yourself into, you know, a square peg in a round hole if you hate getting on it. You know, if you like taking photos with your phone, then I would n- gravitate for Instagram. I mean, a lot of it's well, going to be... Well, but what if your client... Like, my wife has never logged in to Instagram. Right. She's on Facebook every day. So, right. you know... You have, to, you have to balance it between where your audience is. But if the thing is, if, if you're not going to do it yourself, then you're going to have to pay somebody to do it. Like, yeah. if... And I would say for the auto guy, most of his eyeballs are going to be on Facebook. Right. That's, that's, if he was coming to me and asking for my advice and help, I'd say, people are asking on Facebook, my car broke down, where do I go? Right. You know? And depending on the town you're in, Twitter might be uh, one you want to look at, too, because you can do a lot of good social listening on Twitter. You could, somebody may tweet, hey, I need an auto mechanic, and you could be listening for that in your local area, right. and you could go that way. So, it, you know, it, it's kind of a balance between what you want to do versus what you want to pay for and where your audience is. Right. Uh, where do you see the, the blog fitting in? Is it, is it diminishing in importance? Is it just shifting? Um, I, I still think, you know, they say people don't want to read, but, uh, but there's also studies that show the long-form content does really well for SEO. Right. I think SEO is still around. Uh, pe- blog, I still blog. I, you know, I still do, like for my podcast, I still do my show notes because it's important. I have a great uh, image with that. Um, I think video is on the rise. You know, all this stuff with Periscope and Meerkat and all that stuff. I mean, as long as you have something to say, you know, just don't turn on the Periscope and just smile at it. You know, that kind of it's, doesn't oh, do anything. Now you, know. you tell me. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. But sorry to burst your bubble. But... Um, <sighs> You, you know, if you have something to say and you can do something, if you're, in, if you're good in front of a camera, use video. People love using video. I mean, it, it, it does make a difference. So, so they, they got to get one of those like $60,000 fancy cameras like from N- NBC and the satellite feed and the hookup and the like super like 4K, 5K, IMAX sort of 3D image video and like, like yeah. really great, right? Yeah. Well, not anymore. I mean, if you have a, a decent cell phone, the smartphone, you can, you, I, I would have killed for this, you know, five years ago. Mm-hmm. The ability to stream stuff, I mean, that was, uh, you know, and a lot of it's junk. I mean, it's still kind of trying to find out it's, people are on there just blabbing and it's not making, it's not providing any value. Right. But if you could get on there and provide value, I mean, a lot of times now I'll get on before my show, do a little, hey, I'm having this person on, intro kind of a thing, um, you know, and come and ask questions. That I could see adding value. Uh, or if somebody's at an event, like I got to watch Joe, uh, Joel Calm speak. I wanted him to speak on this thing, and somebody was uh, shooting it over on uh, Periscope, and it was great for me to watch. Right. So stuff like that that provides value. And if, like you were talking about the uh, auto mechanic, if he's, if he's got a car up on the lift and he's, he's having a special on, you know, changing your spark plug or, you know, getting a tune-up, going in there and showing that real quick, it doesn't have to be professionally edited. And, but people will watch it and find value out of it. Right. So somebody's going to listen to this and say, well, that's easy. Auto mechanic, you know, there's 12,000 moving pieces and parts on a car they could, they could film. But I'm an insurance agent. What the heck am I going to do with photos? Well, you can stand out because there's not going to be very many uh, insurance agents that do good photos. You know, I mean, so, you know, don't, you know, if you can stand out in a certain way, you know, do it. But um, you may be able to provide content uh, for your clients in different ways, like, you know, what are, what are the main things your clients are coming to you asking questions about? What would save you time that you don't want to answer on the phone that you could just go, hey, I've got this article over here or this video of me explaining this policy, the different policies between life and you know, term and all that kind of stuff that I could just shoot you to? Would that save you time in your day? Probably. Could it bring you more clients? Maybe. If you're the only one out there in your local area that's providing value and giving content that actually solves a problem, then yes. So. so would I just make a simple image that says, what's the difference between term life and whole life? And, sure. And make it, it links to my website and my blog? 
Yeah, you can make a like on Canva. They even came out uh, lately with some new infographic kind of templates. You could do that. What's the difference between term? What's you know, and 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 those kind of things that are, are that are questions that people ask. So yeah, I mean images, and then people start sharing those images and, and embedding them on their websites, and you get traffic back to your site and SEO, and and you know it just all kind of starts snowballing. Look, man, this is obviously hype. You know, I'm busy. I got staff. I got a payroll. I, I got client calls coming in. I got to go to Chamber of Commerce function. How am I supposed to do all this? Well, if you can't do it, then it's, this, is my, this is what I tell people now. You know, yes, I can do my own taxes. I have before. I'm horrible at it. I hate it. I don't, I'm, I will have the IRS calling me, but I can do it. You know, I, and it's the same thing right now. It's, it's going to be like the price of doing business is having good images. I mean, I really believe that. Um, it's just like a, now a real, most all businesses have a website, even if they stink and they're just what we call brochureware, where it's just like a trifle that's up on the internet. They still, they do it because you're supposed to have one and it, it's there for SEO and Google and all that stuff. And so I think it's just, if, if you don't want to do it, you're going to have to pay somebody to do it, or, you're going to, or your competitors will, and you'll fall, fall behind. Right. Uh, he's going to bite the bullet, huh? Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just the price of doing business, I think. Now, you don't have to spend a gazillion dollars and spend like $5,000 revamping your logo. I mean, you can find some really good uh, graphic artists that can, can create templates for you, and I'm all about repurposing. Like, when I create an image, I create one main image, and I know how to... Um, crop it to go to all those different networks. So I don't have to spend hours creating image uh, images for all, like for Facebook, for Twitter, and all the, and Instagram. I create one, and I know how to crop it. You can find a designer who will do that for you, that will say, here's the main image. When it's time to, you know, go to these other networks, all you have to do is go into Canva or some other program and, and you know, move your logo around, and boom, output it, and you're done. So, you know, be smart on who you hire. Um. So, so Canva's cool. I, I got a, a deal a while back on Share as Image. Have you used that? I have not used that. Um, it's a cool little tool. Uh, what about things, though, like um, are you doing any type of curation of content, like Buffer or Feedly or, or things like that? I do just because it's easy, and I, I do it for my client. I use all of those. I mean, I use Feedly to find content. You know, I, I have all of the main uh, people in my industry already set up on Feedly. Um, and I also use Buffer to, to share out stuff. For Pinterest, I use a program called Tailwind. Buffer now has the ability to, um, you're able to schedule your pins, your, your Pinterest pins to go out. And it's a great um, thing for people who are just getting started on Pinterest. For when you start really, if you're selling products and you're really seeing a lot of traffic and, and you really want to highlight Pinterest, I would go with Tailwind because it has a little bit more control and a little bit better scheduling. Okay, so that's what helps you schedule. Is that free or is that a paid app? Uh, Tailwind is paid, and I believe that the buffer, you have to have the awesome plan to get scheduling of pins with that. Okay. What about things like Hootsuite or Sprout Social or whatever? I mean, there's just so many, right? Yeah, I mean, it, they're all tools. I mean, you can do it all organically, um, but if you if you really are hitting it hard, those tools really do help. And uh, Hootsuite, Sprout, Sprout Social is pretty expensive, but it, a lot of my friends use it and really like it. I'm still I still use Hootsuite a lot for my stuff too. Okay. So, yeah, they're all good, but they're all tools. I mean, they're not going to do anything for you. Just like social media. I mean, if if your product's crap, the <laughs> the best social media is not going to help you at all. It's still going to be out there. So. Right. All right, so give us give us some nuggets. I got your uh, Pinterest page over here. Mm -hmm. um, I see the different boards. Uh, so at the top, how do we know? Like, what are yours versus some that that you're sharing, right? Because you have your social media tips, Pinterest tips, right. Twitter tips, mainly Pinterest tips, podcasts, mainly Pinterest yep. tips. You know, yep. so. But then as we scroll down, what do these icons mean? Like the DIY graphic design, it's got a little two-person uh, icon on the right. Those are group boards. Okay. And that means I've, 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 those are either ones I've started or that I've joined with other people. Like, for example, I have a board with Peg Fitzpatrick, and she's, she was the co-author with uh, Guy Kawasaki on our social media. Um, and we have it's on Instagram. And, so, and right now it's just close to her and I. So um, Peg and I pin Instagram tips to that for our, 
our people who are following us. And that's called a group board. And so you can have just as many people as you want. You can have it open. You can have people ask to be to join those group boards. But it's a great way to, to grow your Pinterest account at the beginning um, because your contents get seen by some of those group boards that have huge amounts of followers. And so I'm I'm part of them, and I actually created some for my own. So it's just it's just a great strategy to get more people to view your content. Because when I when I like I pin my my blog article, well, what happens is is people see that image and they repin it to their board, and then other people repin it to their board. Well, all of those are linked back to my content, right? And so that's driving traffic to my site. Um, one of the coolest things about Pinterest, it's got one of the longest shelf lives of all. Uh, the social media out there because you know um, like I think it's Twitter lasts about 2.8 hours Facebook content lasts about 3.2 hours but Pinterest um, you know 40% of the clicks happen within the first day when you put something on there the first day 40% you'll get clicks back after that 70% happens within the first two days well the remaining 30% of the clicks come all the way through 30 days and beyond so I've got content that I pinned when I very first started using Pinterest that I still get traffic from. Okay. So it's a great long-term traffic driver. And uh, that's huge for um, bloggers, for businesses. Um, and if you have a product, like a physical product, to me, Pinterest is a no-brainer. Oh, wow. Okay. So all, so those are those are ones that you created, all mm -hmm. these, or, or are or you just a member of them? Right. The okay. group. Mm -hmm. So either way, but how do we know if it's one you created versus one you just repinned or joined yourself? If you click on a group board, the first person that's listed their icon, that's the person who created the board. Okay. And so um, that's how you can kind of tell. Now, you'll get invitations. To, if you're on Pinterest, you'll get invitations to join group boards. Mm -hmm. And it's a good idea to research those because some of them are junk and spammy. Um, you can request to join group boards. Like I've requested some big like social media ones that are, are really good and a lot of people see my content. But there are rules. And so like some of them have it. You can only – and it's whatever the, the board owner sets up. So okay. they only say you can only pin one a day or once one piece of content every six months. I mean, you, so you have to follow those rules or they, they'll kick you out. Gotcha. Sort of like don't be a dweeb when you <laughs> walk up to the company picnic and uh, don't start selling Amway uh, to yeah, everyone. Exactly. <laughs> it's yeah. just the social media etiquette, right? Right. <laughs> and, in, and, on, and on Pinterest, you know, 80% of the content being shared are repins. And so that 20%, people are hungry for new content. And so like when I pin something new, I've got a lot of people now since I have a, a rather a larger-ish following. That, so my content gets spread a lot faster and a lot more people see it. And that, therefore, it drives traffic back to my website. In fact, Pinterest now is the number one dra driving traffic to my site. Very cool. So uh, people could do a lot worse than just finding you and and stalking you and just doing what you do, right? Right. I mean, it's it's worked for me. So, I mean, it, and it really does, um, you know, and there's that whole thing, you know, and I played on it when I developed my brand was that, uh, you know, people think there's nothing for guys on Pinterest. Well, it's not really true. I mean, there's a lot of, um, you know, the NFL's on it now. They've just revamped everything. The Major League Baseball has a great, a great board. Uh, the hawk, uh, NHL is huge. Um, and now uh, men are actually the fastest growing demographic in Pinterest in the U.S. Um, in 2014, the average, the, I mean, the number of men using Pinterest doubled. And now... In what uh, year? 2014? Uh, 2014, yeah. Okay. And now there are more men using Pinterest in the United States every month than read Sports Illustrated and GQ combined. Shut the front door. No, that's the truth. <laughs> All right. I see the NFL. Hey, they, Dick Butkus has a board. So you know what? There you go. Yeah. Now, maybe it's not his, but somebody put it on there. So it's got to be all right. I met him once. He's a cool and dude. It, and, and it's funny because, you know, guys really are visual. And so it's kind of funny that, you know, this in, in other countries, it's really more of a 50-50 split. Uh, it's just here in the U.S. They've kind of had the somehow it got on that everyone's pinning wedding dresses and nail tutorials. Well, okay. Look, the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders – I have plenty of pictures, so I would say Pinterest is for men. <laughs> yeah, it's got some. And just be careful what you pin because there, there's still a lot of uh, women on there, and I've actually heard from a lot of uh, big time, they have huge followings, like millions plus, 
on Pinterest that that's the fastest way they'll get to unfollow somebody if you're pinning inappropriate content. So just be careful, guys, if you're using it for business. Don't pin the uh, biker of the, the the biker babe of the week on Pinterest. <laughs> Might not be a good idea. All right, so let me see here. Let's look up manly stuff, right? AR rifles. Can we find something? One of my favorite coming up. What's going on? One of my favorite boards is one of it's it's called like Zombie Survival, and it's got all <laughs> and it's got all the uh, you know knives and you know bug out bags. Um, Art of Manliness. I don't know if you know of them. Sure. Uh, they've got a they have one board, but it's got great stuff on it. And so I really like those guys. Those are they're some of my favorite ones to go to. Hey, Desert Eagle, big handgun. There you go. All right. So the men, get on Pinterest, right? There's I'm a lot gonna, of cool stuff. Yeah. I'm taking cool notes stuff. as we're going here. Very cool. Uh, all right. So what else? What's some other little nuggets? Because you mentioned uh, the different sizes and whatnot, because I know people will try to take a shortcut. Uh, right. But, I mean, these social media platforms, they don't make it easy, do they? You know, no, Facebook's and, and, got a different header page. LinkedIn's got a different. It's different sizes than your YouTube page. Like, oh, my gosh. But but it's just you just have to do it, right? Yeah, and that's and that's why I'm such a big – in fact, you know, people say, what's the best size for an image pin? And I go, 735 by 11, 1102. And I know that because that's what Canva has. I just use what Canva has for their – they've got it all listed for you. You go on their social media things, and you can just drag and drop your stuff in there. It makes it stupid simple. Um, so I'm a big fan just because it's so easy, and I don't have to memorize stuff. Yeah, and it's just Canva.com, right? Yep, yep. How do they make money? How do, how do these companies that give all this great free stuff away make money? Now, for Canva, a lot of their stuff is free, but if you buy their clip art, that's how they make money. Gotcha. So I never buy their stuff. I just because you can upload your own, right? And so I usually get it at a different stock site, or I've already I've taken my own picture or something, and then you can upload it and use it yourself. So they make money by selling their when you up when you design something, they'll say, oh, you've used five of our of our kittens. You need to put you know you got to pay this much money. So that's right. how they make it. Well, and I've been hearing too that. Um and I've stayed away from it a little bit, but I think I got to jump in. And the old, you know, just sharing inspirational quotes sort of thing. Um, I mean, people love that stuff. Yeah. And so, I mean, there was a big, there was a thing yesterday. Some what was a big social media guy says, I'm unfollowing everybody who shares quotes on Instagram, which I thought was a little extreme, but I understand some of his, his point. Um, but, you know, there's some, I mean, there's some, you mentioned Winston Churchill before art of manliness shared some of that stuff. Um, And I thought it was great. I mean, it's, you know, stuff to remind you to be a man. And so that was, I love that kind of stuff. And so, you know, I don't have any problem with it as long as you don't just dump it on me all at once. Right. Well, we also have to realize, I mean, anybody listening to this that is a marketer or a consultant, I mean, you know, we're up to this in our neck, but the the average person, you know, hasn't even dipped their toe in the water. So while we may be tired of the inspirational quotes, I mean, most people aren't on it as much, and so right. it's still new and fresh to them. Right. right? And, and we see, I mean, since I'm on it all day, and one of the strategies, because, like, Facebook has really throttled down how much people see of your stuff, right. marketers have compensated by putting out more. And so if you're on it more, you're going to see all that stuff fly by. But right. if, you're, if you're touching base like most people, normal people, a couple times a day, then it's, you're not going to see it as much. Right. Um, very cool. So um, what are some, some parting words of wisdom? We're coming up here on, on 30 minutes, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. But what, what would you say, what do you want to leave people with? What do they need to go do for sure, you know, today if they're listening to this? Say they're at the gym, all right, you know, all right, pause this, open your calendar, you know, pull over your car, get your notebook out. You know, when you get home, go do this. Right. Well, one of the things is is just to start because if you go look, and I, I do this in some of my talks that I do, is that if you go look at my earlier stuff, it's crap. It's horrible. I mean, it's a, it's a process. Um, if you're making images, you will get better. Just keep doing it. Um, a guy I really like and kind of changed and kind of spurred me on to, to try some stuff and step outside of my comfort zone, he said, his name is John Acuff, and he said, 90% perfect and shared with the world always changes more lives than 100% perfect and stuck in your head, mm-hmm. which a lot of times we'll sit there in vapor lock and not do anything because we want it to be perfect, especially as guys. I mean, guys, I think a lot of times do that. So just go out and try it and do it and keep, and keep getting better. I guess right. that's the advice I'd give. 
So, so what should they do? Let's say they don't even have a Pinterest account, or they have, and they just never logged in. I mean, should they go to YouTube first? Should they go to your YouTube channel and, and find some, some how-tos, or does Pinterest have some how-to help? You know, um, I mean, like Pin- literally, they're just like, what the heck do I even do? Yeah, uh, Pinterest has some good, uh, some great stuff. Um, th- like for Pinterest for Business, they have a great little blog. You can go to manlypinteresttips.com. I've got a bunch of experts that I interview, and then my YouTube channel, like you mentioned, too, has a, a bunch of stuff on it as well. But yeah, there's stuff out there if you want to learn how to to um, do um, better visuals. In fact, I'm getting ready to launch a, in October a visual marketing conference. It's at visual. Uh, it's at visualsocialmarketingconference.com. I think that's it. VisualSocialMediaConference.com. That's what it is. Man. And, and, yeah, I can't remember. It's, somebody else came up with the name. Anyway, but it's really, um, <laughs> it's, it's going to be some experts teaching this kind of stuff that we're talking about today is how to, how to normal people learn how to make images because I think that's a big problem a lot of small businesses have. Right. All right. Very cool. So is that where we should send people? ManlyPinteresttips.com? Is that the best place to find you? That's the best place. All right. ManlyPinteresttips.com. And then uh, you can find you on Twitter. Uh, it's Jeff C, but C is spelled S-I-E-H. Correct? That is, that is correct. Very nice. The bearded, manly Pinterest wonder. Man, Thank you, thanks for coming on the sales podcast. And now I have to go and redo my man cave. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> See you later. All right, dude. Have a great day. So there you have great sales and marketing advice on Pinterest from a dude from Texas with a beard. Who'd have thunk it? Uh, You know, I have the advantage of interviewing these people and applying what I learn in the interviews uh, for weeks, sometimes even months before these podcasts go live. Uh, And a couple of things I've been working with quite extensively since speaking with Jeff is Canva, C-A-N-V-A, and WordSwag. I've really enjoyed WordSwag, making images on my phone. I've been making uh, social media posts, but even some images from my website for blogs uh, through WordSwag, and it's all free, so very cool. And there's still a lot of things I need to jump into, legend and light, you know, things I got to test, but you know what? Uh, we always say, you know, it's the power of one, right? I learned that from Dan Kennedy. Find one thing. If you get one nugget out of this and apply it, you know what? It's worth the time that you just spent on this, uh, and so if if making free images on Canva or even very affordable images, and I've done that, made a lot of images and some logos, you know, for when I need something quick. Uh, again, uh, for blog posts, I use that as well. If either, either of those tools help you, then, hey, this was worth it, right? If you have time to go back through and, and use some other tools, then it's just it's an exponential growth for you uh, as far as an ROI on this, okay? Some other things I have uh, also added, haven't used extensively, uh, is Feedly. I have that now in the dock in my Mac, so it's in the bottom, and I have it on my iPhone. So, you know, rather than just goofing off on social media, I can scroll through uh, both Feedly. And I have been using Flipboard, so it's just a, an aggregator, right? It's a feed that, that you can add uh, people or topics, and these uh, these programs will go out and curate that content and bring it to you so you're not just bouncing all over the web. Uh, you can scroll through and find interesting info to not only educate yourself with, uh, but also share that, okay? And that's a big part of being, you know, seen as a leader nowadays, uh, and really always, uh, is who do you hang out with? What type of information can you share and bring to others? When you look at like, newspapers, a lot of times, uh, you'll see, you know, the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal, USA Today, you know, they'll have an AP story. So they didn't make that content. They're just curating that content and making it easier. They know what you're interested in. They make it easy for you to consume. Well, you can do the same thing with these types of uh, Feedly and and Buffer. Okay, and I've been using Buffer on and off now for maybe a year, uh, and I like that tool as well. So make sure you go, you know, again, pick one of these things and just get going. I love his quote, you know, talking about John Acuff. I got to hear him speak at, uh, at Icon 15 uh, this past March, going into April, and I've got his book, and, you know, that guy's got a great story, very inspirational, you know, 90% perfect and share with the world is better than 100% perfect, but stuck in your head, okay? So, as always, a lot of things to listen to. I encourage you to go back and re-listen to it. Uh, all of the tips and links, everything that we talked about, you can find at thesaleswhisperer.com slash session 138. That'll do it for today's show, but the learning and the doing 
now follows. If you would like my help to implement what needs to get done, help you identify what needs to get done and the best path and the best vehicles to use to accelerate down that path, please head on over to the saleswhisperer.com slash IPA. There you will see an overview of what I call my initial process assessment. It's not expensive, but it's not cheap. Uh, but you know, like they say, I'd rather spend more than I want it to than less than I should to grow my business. So if you need some help, if you'd like me one-on-one to help, again, please head on over to thesaleswhisperer.com slash IPA.